Hey, what's up guys? Sean here with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Hope everyone's having a great start to your day. We are officially the last day of November, which only means one thing. We have one full month left in the year 2021. All right. As far as the U.S. Mint goes, it's been kind of a crazy year, okay? In both good and bad. We're going to kind of explore, I guess, our five top five things ideas coins concepts that the u.s mint should just ban do away with never to be seen again hopefully and i think a lot of you probably would agree with me on on most of these now there's probably also going to be some items or ideas that were talked about in today's video that i would love to hear your comments on go ahead and post them below uh but yeah, in a nutshell, I think this year, um, it, man, what, what's a good way of kind of describing what happened this year? Well, first and foremost, yeah, we had our first pre-sales event in quite a long time that I wanted to talk about in this video. Um, you know, that should be number one. Uh, the pre-sale event on the Morgan and Peace Dollar series went so absolutely horrible wrong on many levels. The people that did buy these at the pre-sale events over the summer, ended up trying to scalp them online for anywhere from 5 to 10 times what the actual going rate was when you could buy it at the pre-sale event. Uh, not to mention all of the various different types of uh, website issues that, that were quite apparent in these particular instances. But yeah, they don't need to pull this shit anymore. Uh, it, it just went horribly wrong. And, uh, considering that, you know, other companies and businesses are doing pre-sale events with much greater successes and probably at a high volume as well, you know, um, based off of, you know, some of the numbers of these Morgan and peace dollars, you know, with a hundred some odd thousand pieces made, there are other companies that sell a heck of a lot more in a much shorter period of time and still manage to get get through it all without a hitch uh so yeah pre-sale is definitely one thing that i think the u.s mint should never ever attempt again that should be a hard pass uh you know based off of just everything that happened this year um you know they, they could lie to our faces and say oh we were beta testing this concept and all is good or all is bad, so we're not going to do it anymore. I, I call horseshit on that because I think they had every intention of doing it, trying to, um, trying to uh, confirm the transactions, get the money, you know, uh, dedicated to these sales, um, even though they did not have the supply or the employee account to be able to fulfill these. So that way it didn't need to be a pre-sales event. So anyways, that's the first one. I figure we just get that one out of the way. But the other last four are actually items that we could talk about. Uh, so I went product schedule on the U.S. Mid website. And we, we're doing 2021 because we have a full 12-month scope of what was being sold. Okay. And if we took a look at, up and down the list, there's, there's a lot of stalwarts. From the U.S. Mint year in, year out. The number one big thing that, that seems to be sold every year is some sort of funky commemorative. All right. I, you know, again, not a personal dig on any of the subject matter that's being utilized for these commemoratives. Not at all. Uh, Krista McAuliffe, you know, uh, first teacher that was supposed to go out in this outer space. And uh, she ended up losing her life when things um, didn't go as planned on the uh, space shuttle. All right. Uh, the Columbia disaster. Is it Columbia? Uh, but <laughs> in any event, I mean, it's pretty. But in all reality, the uh, Challenger, sorry, um, Columbia was the other one. Uh, Challenger disaster. I mean, it, it's a really nice looking metal. And I think... It, it it it's a good product and a good gift, but you know, with a mintage limit of three hundred and fifty thousand pieces, I mean that's a lot. That's a lot dedicated to this. And uh, for those of you that are on like Facebook, they the U.S. Mint just 
consistently puts up an ad to to obtain this coin even today this was made available earlier in the year like in january or february so um yeah obviously they're having a heck of a time selling these things out um there's silver okay triple nine fine silver uh however the price is way out there i think on the u.s mint's website it's uh I'm not going to really say it's a cash grab. I mean, yeah, it, it's a substantial premium uh, for a silver item. And these commemoratives will drop like a rock if you did buy them at $79. There's going to become a point in time in the near future where these things are going to be worth less than $40. Uh, now, I think the reason why that commemoratives should be banned, I think has a lot more to do with my own personal preference on this one. This is the, the kind of like the one out of the five where it's like, you know, this is my personal feelings. I don't think they should sell these anymore because they don't sell out some of the subject matter or content matter that they put on these. I, it leaves a little bit to be desired. They're not as interesting as you would like them to. And, you know, with that being said, I, I mean, you know, they, they, these are kind of like a one-off thing. Uh, a lot of people don't really know a lot about these commemoratives. I guess that's okay, but that's the big reason why that they don't sell out of them is they don't really promote them too well. Um, plus, you know, in addition to all that, I think with the commemorative program through the U.S. Mint, they tend to... Now... Chris McAuliffe obviously is historic, okay, as a person and, you know, for what she represents in the teaching community. Um, but they, the U.S. Mint seems to pick kind of uh, some of these very niche type of subject matters that they put onto their coins. Um, and usually your best way to support the cause isn't to buy the coin. Um, because I don't really think that any of this is going to a charitable organization. So it's really just, hey, you know what? Let's go ahead and do this this design. And um, yeah, yeah, it doesn't go to a charitable organization. It, it, it's all in-house money. Um, I mean, a lot of these are like that. You know, they, they, they'll have other different types of commemoratives. Let's see if we could find another one. Um, I mean, you have these law enforcement medals. I, I don't know if anything goes to the cause on, on those particular items. I mean, this is all, I mean, this is a government agency, the U.S. Mint. And, um, you know, everything sold is, is money in the pockets of this particular institution. So I haven't heard of, of one medal or offering where some of this stuff actually goes to the cause. Uh, and that's unfortunate. And that's the primary reason why I think they should ban them, okay, is because they have no no helpful cause when they're being produced. They're just being produced to pay tribute to someone. Zero percent of the money goes to an actual cause or an event for those. And then all the money just stays in-house. They profit however much they make off of them, which, uh, you know, if you're selling 300,000 coins, could be a substantial amount of money. Uh, you just never know. All right, so that's the second thing that I think they sh they could do away with. I personally wouldn't care. Uh, the third one. All right, so this one doesn't really come up too often. Uh, but since we we are now on the tail end of the America the Beautiful National Park Quarter series, I think the one thing that they should never bring back ever again are the five ounce silver hockey pucks. And these are the bullion coins that were produced, one for each of the different National Park series. Uh, they are five ounces of triple nine fine. Uh, the premiums are right there. I mean, $229. Yeah, the mintage limit is low at only 20000 They really did not make a whole lot of these. Uh, but you could get one of these today for around this price, if not maybe a little bit cheaper. Sure, they're a little bit, they're very comfortable to hold in your hands because of their weightiness. Um, but uh, these things have, have waned in popularity. And, uh, you know, to make matters worse, when the U.S. Mint is cranking out a bunch of product throughout the year, this is the one that a lot of people, you know, I'm not going to say overlook, but they, they tend to skip this one. 
Um, and the people that really do want it will buy one. Uh, now, fortunately, they only make 20000 of each. We do have another multi-year program, the American Women Program. That's going to be going on in 2022 to 2000, I believe, 25. It's a four-year series. I hope they possibly could do away with the five-ounce hockey pucks and possibly do something else that's a little bit more uh, um, uh, more of a better value seller for these for this particular series of quarter. Um, in this particular case, I mean, these things have grown, grown long in the tooth and, uh, I don't know what kind of a profit factor or margin these particular bullion coins have, but I feel like that the U S men could do away with them and nobody would miss them. Nobody would care. I think this would be an easy pass for, for the future going into 2022. All right. So the fourth item that I think the U S men should do away with and they are long overdue are these freaking presidential silver medals now obviously if this is an ongoing program they're going to do presidential medals for every single president from george washington all the way up to whoever they consider to be the most current president you know obviously it's a series people do collect these and um there's even an enrollment program um, that you could participate in so that way you could get your monthly or twice a year or annual allotment of these things. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the silver factor obviously is cool with it. Uh, these things are how, how I know they're triple nine fine and they're 31 grams. So, you know, it's uh, not my favorite. Um, the the one thing that gets me mintage limit is none, so it's got kind of like a uh, a mint to demand type of deal. But the whole presidential thing is is it's old, and a lot of people are less interested in these now because we had the presidential series of one dollar coins. Um, of course, you know we have presidents on all of our circulating coinage from George Washington to FDR to. Uh, you know, uh, Lincoln and Jefferson and, you know, whoever else I missed. So these things are kind of irrelevant. They're unneeded. And, you know, it's soaking up precious silver supply, which I think, I think, and the U.S. Mint has not really come clean as far as their stance or status on the supply chain issue with silver blanks. But I feel like that they probably had um, some issues obtaining the kind of silver that they need. And I think that's primarily part of the reason why that they elected to do a pre-sale event for the Morgan and Peace Dollar series, because that, ladies and gentlemen, soaks up a bunch of silver supply for our program. Uh, and they're going to do it again. They're going to do proof Morgan and Silver Dollar, uh, pre Peace Dollar release in 2022. I'm glad they're only doing one of each type. Uh, so yeah, these things, I definitely wouldn't care if they just all of a sudden fell off the face of the earth and went bye-bye. I, I think um, that there's going to be a very, very small percentage of people that actually would give a damn about these things. All right. And finally, the last thing that I think the U.S. Mint should just say, hey, you know what? Whew. Let's go ahead and cut it off uh, because these, these coins are certainly unneeded. They're irrelevant. I don't even know why we're selling them. It's going to be the NIFC coins. That includes the 2022 Kennedy half dollars. You know, they're going to sell them, right? Uh, a coin that no longer is being made for circulation. You can only buy them through the U S mid website at this particular juncture, I think it sounds more like a money grab than anything else, considering that, you know, the prices on these at $147 for $100 face is just an asinine idea. It used to be that the U.S. Mint had a program for some previous NISC coins, probably going back like 10 years, where you could buy a $1,000 face. For a thousand dollars shipped. They actually had that program. Now, I'm not sure if you guys remember it. But what people were doing. And the big reason why. That they don't do this anymore. And I believe those are dollar coins. They were like Sacagawea. Some sort of Native, Native American. Different 
reverse design type affair. But the big reason why was that people were buying them at face value from the mint. They were leveraging their rewards-based credit cards and just cranking out all of the uh, uh, the, the perks and uh, awards, especially if you have a cashback program credit card. People were buying those $1,000 bags at like 10 grand, 20 grand, 30 grand a pop. And the real reason why that those were even available from the U.S. Mint was that the idea was you were going to buy these things and you were going to help distribute and circulate the coins and nobody did that. You ever wonder why the some of the banks have like bags of these things? Is that people were buying them off the US Mint website. They were getting them uh, shipped to their door and then they would take the bags and deposit them through their financial institution and they you know they would literally go through unscathed unopened and uncirculated so <laughs> i mean what's the difference then and now is that you know the the concentration of coins is in smaller face value quantities and the u.s mint is asking an arm and a leg for these damn things and you know there's just no need for these Nobody circulates big denomination coin anymore. Nobody has half dollars on them. Nobody spends dollar coins unless you receive it back from like a, a Coke machine, a vending machine, and then you go and use that same money to, to pay for stuff. Vending machines today, unless you're dealing with an older generation style vending machine, um, normally would take credit cards, debit cards. Some would take PayPal and Apple Pay and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, the the larger denomination coins like half dollars, like your, uh, was it the American Innovation dollar series of coins like this one here. Um, the, this is on a program as well. I mean, they're not going to do anything till the program end anyways, you know, so it's one for each state. I don't even know how, how far in they are. I have to say what, one and a half, two years. If that, but just look at the prices. You really gonna pay twenty five dollars face and spend thirty four dollars and fifty cents. So it's a premium. And at the end of the day, this is gonna be more for your collector. And these, by the way, have no zip and zilch, nada, no secondary market value to them whatsoever. They are you're pretty much buying um, just coin rolls from the bank, and then you know. They're, they're going to take your word for it that you're going to circulate them. Um, but yeah, the, the, this stuff is just, it's one of the dumbest ideas the U.S. Mint has ever done. Uh, but, you know, as far as NIFC goes, the real reason why anybody buys these is to add them to like an album. They like the design. But at the same time, the U.S. Mint should just sell like a two-coin singular set, you know, or maybe a five-coin set. Maybe it'll have, you know, the PD. Uh, uh, you know, uncirculated, maybe they'll have proof struck coins in there, maybe a reverse proof. Like they should really put together some sort of unique set and possibly put in like a triple nine fine version of that coin. How cool would that be? And you can make a lot more money promoting and pitching that style of product rather than going out and actually producing massive quantities of these. Um, we, besides, if you did it that way, you could shrink down the amount of uncirculated business strike dollar coins down to a rare mintage figure, maybe a hundred thousand pieces or less of each design, and then part them out in all of these various different types of sets that they could do. Because they also have a circulated set, they also have proof sets, they have silver proof sets. Things of that nature. But this one either needs to go away completely, these NIFCs, or they need to be completely overhauled for a much better product experience for its customers. I think if you're able to offer something that is wildly more unique, it's different, you add in some PMs in there because people love precious metals and based off of U.S. Mint product offerings in the past, they have no problem overcharging for silver at melt, um, but people are still buying it. But the overall presentation, the product, has to meet up to the expectations of what people want 
and, and want. They just want something different. They want something a little bit more um, uh, uh, prestigious. They want something a little bit lower, lower mintage, you know, and it's not going to be something that everybody can get, you know? So imagine if they made a triple nine fine silver, you know, New Hampshire or whatever this is. Wow, I mean, that would be pretty awesome, you know, added into a five coin set and you'd really have something that cooks, ladies and gentlemen. And then, you know, you'll have the two business strikes and then you'll have also a reverse proof and a standard proof um, type uh, in a five coin set. I think that would be lights out and I think people would be more aware of that type of product rather than just selling the uncirculated coins and they still have like a mintage of like five million or ten million or whatever it is. While a lot smaller it's still way too much to fulfill the overall desire and demand of the numismatic public but those are the five things that i think the u.s mint could ban and should ban and nobody would really even care right i mean some of you probably agree or disagree with me let me know what else that the u.s mint could do away with uh i mean there's a whole other kind of like other sub tier list of like things that I wish they would bring back or possibly do as a new concept or program. Uh, but really, that really entails them actually listening to its clients. And I don't think they really do that fantastic of a job like that. But that's going to go ahead and do it, guys. Would love to hear your thoughts. Any other coins that you want to see banned that they could ban, uh, would love to hear your thoughts. Go ahead and post them below. That's going to go ahead and do it. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy today's content. Hit the dislike button if you don't. But that's going to go ahead go ahead and do it, my Coinaholics. You guys have a wonderful day. God bless. Love you guys. And I will see you on the next coin video. So long.